OK, we are going to. Be solving exponential equations today, and what you're going to see. Is that we use logarithms to solve exponential equations and exponential equations to solve logarithms. That's because they're inverses. That's the value of inverses. One of the values. All right, so here we have. There. Here we have an exponential equation. 3 to the x power equals 8. OK, well, really, we can just use the uh, conversions that we've been using for the past two days, but let's use a slightly easier way to do this. OK. Well, I'm going to move over a little bit. I'm going to take the log, the log base 10, of both sides, the log of both sides. Now here's the reason I have to use a log, some kind of log. I could take the LN of both sides, but I personally prefer to use the LN only when I have an E in the equation. So here I've taken the log of both sides. The reason is that logs bring down exponents. I'm going to use the power rule now. To bring this exponent down, so I'll have X times the log of 3. I don't really need that. It would be better to put it here because of course that's what you have to do with your calculator. If you're putting this in your calculator. Never, never, never. Use a calculator before the last step. Otherwise you could get round off error, which would cause you to get the problem wrong. All right, log three is a number. I'm going to divide both sides by log three. The log threes cancel out, leaving me with X equals the log of eight over the log of three. This is called the exact answer. This is not what my math lab is looking for. Or the exact solution. That's what they call it. I prefer answer because answer says what it is. Most people use the word answer. But exact solution. Why? Because it is. What X equals. Now, of course, you can't do anything with that, not in real life, so you would put this in your calculator and round to four decimal places, and I just realized I do have the final answers here. Ta-da! So X is about... Well, 
1.8928. And that's the answer you should get in your calculator if you've been very careful to close your parentheses. In fact, in the calculator, this is what you should see. Log. There's a paren. You type eight and then you have to close the parents. Then hit the division sign. Hit log, L-O-G. And then log parenthesis comes up, put a three, close. Now hit enter. And that should get you this answer. You, you might have to round that final fourth digit. You might not. Now let's go on. We're going to do, I'm going to try to do all of these. Okay. Uh, because this is all new to you. Log equals, uh, no, no, no. Solve for X. Number two, this was number one. Let me write this down. Number one, in your homework. We're starting out easy and we're building up. Number two. Two to the X equals 32. Here's our exponential function. Now, there are actually two ways to do this. If you know, and most people don't, but if you happen to know that 32 equals two to the fifth power, then this is how you would do that. Well, the twos are the same. So obviously, X equals five. It's very handy if you happen to know that two to the fifth power is 32, but not everybody knows, as I said. So let's assume that you don't know. We're going to take the log of both sides. That's because only the log can bring the X down in front so that we can solve for it. There. Now, I bring the X down. That's the value of using logarithms. I'll have X times log two equals log 32. Log two is just a number. <clears throat> so divide both sides of the equation by log two. Cancel out the log two on the left. So you'll have X equals log 32 divided by log two. Always close your parentheses. In the calculator, the argument has to be totally enclosed in parentheses. Even if your book doesn't do it, the calculator makes you do it. Now, the answer should be the same. You can put it in your calculator and see. This is the exact answer, exact solution. I want you to be aware of that. 
but on rare occasion, you actually get an exact solution from a calculator. How do I know if it's an exact solution? Because there are no decimals. That is, there's not a long decimal that you have to round to four decimal places. There's just a five. That's because back in the old days, I could have done this by hand and not needed a calculator. Not had one, right? They're inventions that came in in the 1980s, scientific calculators. I know, because that's when I was in college. Let's look at number three. Number three. Base 3 raised to the power 3x equals 9. Oh, come on, you can do this by hand. 3 to the 3x equals 3 to the 2. You want to try to get the same base, but you know that 9 is 3 to the 2 power. So what have you got here? You've got a base raised to that power equals the same exact base raised to that power, so 3x has to equal 2. They have to be the same. How could they not be? Question mark. Divide by 3. Divide by 3. So x equals 2 thirds. If you were to put this in your calculator, you would get 0.6667, which would not be the exact answer. And what they're asking for here, you always want to read these blue letters underneath the answer box, and that's an answer box in my math lab. It says type an integer or a fraction, which means your answer is going to be exact. It has to be exact. So I believe this is the only way you could work this one. But it's not hard to know that 9 is 3 to the 2. Yeah, you can manage that. But now we're back to the calculator. You might be glad to know. Number 4. we're going to have 4 to the x power equals 13. These are very, 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 very basic exponential equations for you to start getting used to the methods for solving them. So I'm going to put parentheses just because I think it makes it cleaner. Now, the log is designed to bring the x down in front. We call that the power rule. Log 4 equals log 13. Log 4 is just a number. It's a des, well, yeah, it's a decimal. So divide both sides by log 4. Cancel, cancel. So the exact answer is x equals the log of 13. Over the log of 4. Now, what they're asking for is a decimal. Do not round until the final answer. 
then round to four decimal places as needed. So, oh, oh, well here, same thing though. Type an integer or a decimal. Round, do not round until the final answer. That's because you get round off error. Then round to four decimal places as needed. Use commas to separate answers. You've only got one answer. So according to the book, the calculator answer you get, if you're careful to close your parentheses, is 1.8502. OK, how is everybody doing? I don't hear any screams of agony. So I bet everyone is still alive. Number five. Now we're branching out a little bit. Number five is six to the X equals two to the X plus two. Well, there's no way, even though six equals two times three, there's no way you're going to get two as a base. So give it up. We're going to take the log of both sides. The log of 6x equals the log of 2 to the power x plus 2. Let me scroll this up. OK, now the log forces the um, exponents to come down. So we're going to have X times log 6 equals. Here you've got two terms up here in your exponent. So you're going to put parentheses around them. X plus 2 times log 2. OK, now we are not just going to divide by log 6. You've got an X on both sides. You have to get your X terms together. So here is where you have to remember that log 2 if you were to put that in your calculator, you would find that it's just a number. A very ugly decimal number, but it's just a number. So treat it like it's just a number. We're going to leave X times log six by itself for a few minutes. And I'm going to distribute this number, log 2, to the x and to the 2 in the parentheses. So x times log 2 plus 2 times log Okay, my next step. See, we've gone up a grade in complication. I have to move this term 
that has X in it, normally, since this is a number, I would have that in front of the X, right? The same over here. Log six is just a number. So in a way, log six is the coefficient of X over here, and log two is the coefficient of X over here. It's just not the way we write it. Now I'm going to subtract subtract X times log, log two from both sides of this equation. So, so minus X times log two minus X times log two. Okay. Over here on the right, X times log two minus X times log two zeros out. Leaving me with two times log two. But over here on the left, I'm going to have X times log six minus X times log two. I have my X's together. Why? Because it's not just that I want to, it's that I have to. If I'm going to solve for X's, I have to get my X terms together on one side of the equal sign and my number terms together on the other side of the equal sign. OK, here now watch. X is a common factor. I'm going to pull it out to the front. And I'll be left with the leftovers. Log. Six. Minus log. Two. And that equals two times log two. OK, we're getting close to being done. There is light. At the end of the tunnel. Now remember those identities you had to learn those those principles of logarithms, the arithmetic of logarithms. Log six minus log two is log six over two. And while we're at it, two times log two is exactly the same thing as the log of two raised to the two. So the two in front came up and became the logarithm. I mean, became the exponent. Duh, duh. This is still the quotient rule here. This is, no, it's not the quotient rule. This is the quotient rule. This is the power rule. 
Now look at the wonderfully easier way we have cleaned this up. Six divided by two is three. So we're going to have X times the log of three equals the log of four. Because two squared is four. Log three is the number, log four is the number. I'm going to divide both sides of this equation by log three. Boom, boom. So X equals the log of four. over the log of three. And this is the exact solution. Anything else will be an approximation, but in all likelihood, we're being asked for the approximation. Do not round until the final answer. I haven't put, I haven't touched a calculator which admittedly I can't touch today. Um, then round to four decimal places as needed. The word round means you're getting an approximation. So X is about, and you see the squiggle there, X is about 1.2619. And let me make that smaller. Let's go back over this and go through the steps. What are the principles of logarithms that you learned yesterday that we're using today? Well, this isn't one of them. This is taking the log of both sides. Using the log, let us bring the exponents down in front so that we could solve for X eventually. So this is the power rule. Then we distributed log two to the X and to the two in parentheses. So this is just distribution. And what could we call this? Moving the X terms. Um, gather the X terms, I don't even know. So, um, down here, factor by GCF. Yeah, this is where we pulled the X out and we're left with x times log 6 minus log 2. OK, so this is factor by GCF.
Okay. Factor by GCF. This is using the quotient rule of logarithms. Right there. This is using the power rule of logarithms. So I would write power rule. Over here, but over here. Quotient rule. So quo rule, best I can do. Okay, now we canceled. This is just typical solve the equation stuff. And here is typical solve the equation stuff. And here is put it in the calculator. Calculator. OK, now let's take a look at this. We're on number five, yeah. So here are the rules we used, constantly using those rules that we talked about yesterday, which is why you have to learn them. Number six is just like number five. But I'm going to do it for you, but do it faster, not talk as much. To which you can say, oh, thank goodness. It's what we all think about our teachers. Twelve to the X equals four to the X plus three. I don't have to put parentheses around there, but they are grouped together into one thing, one, one exponent. Now I take the log of both sides, log of 12 X, 12 to the X equals the log of four to the X plus three. Make sure I have that right, yes. Now the log lets me bring down my exponents, X times the log of 12 equals parentheses X plus three. Remember it's one thing, I have to keep the parentheses around it, times log four. Now I distribute log four to both of those numbers. So I'll have X log 12 equals X times log four plus three times log four. Now I've got to get my X terms together. So I subtract X log four from both sides of the equation. On the, on the right, X log four minus X log four is zero. So I have zero plus three log four. I can leave the three down, you know, from the previous um, example, previous problem, that I am eventually going to move that three up there because it just makes life easier, especially on the calculator. 
where if you get one little parenthesis out of line, you've had it. OK, this is going to be X log 12. Minus X log 4. Now I pull out the GCF, which conveniently happens to be X. And write down the leftovers. Ah, that three is annoying me. I'm gonna go ahead and bring it up. log four to the third power. Throw that in your calculator real fast. You discover it's 64. Four times four times four is 64. Now what that does is that lets me also say, well, I'm using the quotient, uh, I'm using the power rule on this line and then on the next line use the quotient rule. So I could at least keep my, my rules on the same side. Something to consider. X. Log 12 minus log 4 is log of 12 over 4. And I don't really need that. Right there. X times log 12 over 4 equals log 64. I know I must be putting you to sleep, but remember you can always watch the video. And it's important that you see all the steps that go into doing this. Okay, so I'm gonna have log three, up uh, x log three, equals log 64. Yeah, that was before, okay. So now, finally, we're at the end, almost log three. I'm dividing by log three on both sides of the equation. Boom, boom, log three is just a number, so I cancel it out, x equals the exact answer being log 64 divided by log 3. And the approximate answer is 3.7856 six. You see, if you do it, the more you do it, the quicker you can do it. Just don't try to skip steps. It's a disaster if you do.